Hello and welcome to this third video in our series of EIGRP videos for those of you that are looking to seek the CCNA qualification. In our first two videos we've looked at basic EIGRP configuration and basic EIGRP troubleshooting. Both valuable topics that you'll need to master for the CCNA exams. In this video we will look at two more elements of EIGRP configuration. First of all, we'll take a look at how EIGRP decides the best path to take to get to a particular network. Secondly, we'll talk a little bit about EIGRP summarization and the variance command. We're using a slightly different network setup for this video. Here we can see my network setup. I've got four routers. Each router is connected to at least two network segments, with router four connected to three network segments. Most of the exercises we're going to be doing today will be on Router 1 and Router 4, but we'll also be using Router 2 and 3. Now, I've already configured EIGRP across all four routers. I've configured all interfaces with uh, IP addresses, and the appropriate neighbor relationships have been established, which means that the routers have swapped EIGRP alert packets. It means that they have swapped topology information, and they've used that topology information to build their routing tables. Now, before we get to um, the consoles and take a look at router one, let's just have a little think about what we'd expect to find in router one's routing table. In our diagram there, you can see that router one should have two neighbors. Across the 10 network, it should form a neighbor relationship with router two. And across the 11 network, it should form a neighbor relationship with router 3. In turn, router 2 and 3 should also form a neighbor relationship with router 4. Now, if everything's working correctly, that means router 4 would have shared information with router 2 and 3 about network 172.16.1. And both router 2 and router 3 should have shared that information with router 1. So in router 1's routing table, I would expect to see an EIGRP learned route for network 172.16, as well as EIGRP learned routes for networks 14 and network 15, if everything is configured correctly. So let's jump into Route One's console now and take a look at Route One's EIGRP configuration using show commands just to verify that the expected results are there. And then we'll take a look at the topology table and the routing table and discuss EIGRP's uh, routing decision making and its uh, variance command that controls its load balancing. Here we are in route one then. So the first thing we'll do is run the show IP root command to take a look at route one's routing table. So as expected, we can see two directly connected networks, networks 10 and networks 11 and three EIGRP learned networks, networks 14, 15, and 172.16. For our EIGRP learned networks, we have two numbers in brackets. Do you know what these numbers are? These numbers are EIGRP's internal administrative distance, and the second number is EIGRP's metric. Now, EIGRP makes its routing decisions based on four piece information. Out of the box, though, it only uses two. Out of the box, EIGRP uses a composite metric made up of bandwidth and delay. The number we're seeing second in the square brackets there is the value worked out based on these bandwidth and delay figures. What we're going to do is concentrate on the path to network 172.16. Now, if you remember our diagram, route 1 has two paths to network 172.16, two physical paths, one through route 2 and one through route 3, but only one path is showing in our routing table. That's because, like other routing protocols, once the IGRP has worked out the, the cost for all the paths that it can possibly have to a network, it places the best path in our routing table. So what we're seeing is the single best path to network 172.16. Route 
if two paths had equal metric, then both paths would appear inside our routing table. Now, like link state protocols, EIGRP does store all the um, path information to, net to this particular network, but not in the routing table, but it's topology table. So if I run uh, a show command, if I run show IP EIGRP topology, Here we can see EIGRP's topology table, um, an equivalent of a doing a, uh, a the link state database for OSPF. And here we can see that for certain networks, we have additional paths to get there. And again, we're going to concentrate on network 17216. And here we can see a path to network 17216, and it says one successor whose feasible distance is 435200. And then we have two possible paths to that network, one via 10002, and another via 11002. So EIGRP has chosen to place one of these paths in its routing table. Now the way that EIGRP works is to work out a feasible distance to every, of, to, to every network. The feasible distance is a value based on the um, cumulative delay and constraining bandwidth to that network. Now, 172.16 network, our 172.16 network has got a feasible distance of 435200. Now, if we look at all the paths we can see there for network 172.16 and look at the first number in brackets for those paths, we can see that the path via 10.002 matches our feasible distance number. These first number in brackets is the feasible distance to network 172.16 via those paths. And 435200 is a much lower number than 2323456. So the path via 10002 has got the lower metric. That's the one that appears inside our routing table. But we do have this second number in brackets as well. And for both paths, the number's the same, 409600. This number is the advertised distance. This number is the metric that router 2 and router 3 have worked out to get to network 17216. So another way of saying that is that 409600 is router 2 and router 3's feasible distance to get to network 172.16. They in turn advertise that to router 1. So they both told me to get to network 172.16 through them, it costs 409600. Router 1 then takes the advertised distance from router 2 and router 3, adds the cost of the links, its links to get to those routers, and produce its own feasible distance. Now, because one path is going for a fast ethernet connection and a second path is going for a serial link, this produces two massively different numbers. It looks at two numbers and one number is described as the successor path. This is our best path with the lowest feasible distance and it's this path that will appear in our routing table and the second path is called the feasible successor path. This is the next best path to network 17216. Now, we must um, have a note of caution here. You may have 10 or 15 different paths to network 17216. Not all of them will be classed as feasible successors. In order to be considered a feasible successor path, then the advertised distance of the alternate path must be less than the feasible distance of the successor path. So in our example with, of network 17216, the path through 11002 has an advertised distance of 409600, and this is less than the feasible distance of the successor path, 435200. Now, this guarantees a loop-free path to network 172.16 through, net, through host 11.002. Now the feasible successor path 
is an important concept in the IGRP. Any path that's considered a feasible successor is considered loop three and considered a, a, an alternate path to that network. So if our successor path was to fail, then the feasible successor would immediately become the successor path and be promoted to the rooting table, giving EIGRP very fast convergence times. If, however, the um, advertised distance of a path is equal or greater than the feasible distance of the successor path, it cannot be guaranteed to be loop, th loop free, so therefore it is not used. But what if we want to load balance traffic across both of these paths? Well, one of the um, benefits of EIGRP is that it supports both equal cost load balancing and unequal cost load balancing. So if these paths were both the same, if they both had the same um, feasible distance, then they would both be an average table. They were both considered equally as good. And we would have two successors listed in this topology table. But because that path through 11002 is through that serial link, it's not considered as good. So it ends up with this much higher feasible distance. Now, EIGRP supports a command called the variance command. This variance command can help us to promote other paths to a network into our viewing table. So in this example, we want both paths to network 172.16 to appear in our viewing table. To input the variance command, we need to go into the EIGRP process. So if we go to global config, then router EIGRP one, and then use the variance command. Now the variance command is a multiplier. So it will take our um, feasible distance of the successor path in our case, in this example, 435200, then times it by whatever number I put in to this command. So it would take 435200 times it by six. Now, any feasible successor path that falls within this range will be considered good enough to be promoted to our routing table. And we must stress that the alternate paths must be considered feasible successors before they will be promoted to the routing table. So if I return here to input that variance command and now just exit back to the enable prompt and let's take a look at our routing table. Notice now the paths to network 172.16. Here we can see we've got two paths now to get there. One through um, 11.002 and a second path for 11.002 and one through 10.002. Um, and look at the, um, the the metrics. These are two wildly different metrics. One is clearly a much bigger number than the other. This is um, a, a good way to tell if the variance command has been used. If we see a routing table like this and we see an EIGRP learned route and it has two wildly different metrics uh, to the same network we know the variance command has been put in we don't exactly know what variance command but we can use show commands to work that out eigrp is the only uh, protocol that supports unequal cost load balancing in this way protocols like ospf and rip only support equal cost load balancing here we are back at our uh, diagram uh, and again, I want to take a look at this network 172.16. As you can see from the diagram, network 172.16 is, is actually using a, a slash 24 uh, side notation. And the network address is actually 172.16.1.0. But if we flip back to router 1's routing table, here we see that the router, the, sorry, the route in the routing table is only showing a slash 16. Now, this is because that by default, EIGRP is a class full protocol. Like RIP version 2, EIGRP is class full by default, but can be turned classless. This class full by default nature is effectively EIGRP auto summarizing the routes that it advertises. So if it sees a class A, class B, class C address, 
it advertises the class A, class B and class C bits. 172.16 is a class B address. So that all that is all EIGRP's advertising. But like RIP version 2, we can make EIGRP classless with a single command. To do this, we'll need to configure uh, the command on the router that's advertising network 172.16. And for us, that is router 4. So let's go into router 4's uh, console and let's make that change. Here we are on router 4's console. So to make EIGRP classless, and so that advertises the full network address, if we go to global config uh, first, so, and we access the EIGRP process, and the command that we're looking for here is no auto summary. And that one command now turns EIGRP classless. You can also see there that it um, resets its neighbor relationships. So you don't want to be doing this in the middle of a production day on your production routers. But this turns EIGRP classless. So it will now start to advertise the full network address and mask. To show you the results of this, if we flip back to router 1's console, and on router 1, if we do uh, show IP root again, and if we now take a look at the path to network 172.16 and the information in the routing table, notice now it's showing the full uh, subnet address of 172.16.1. So this is an example of auto summary being removed. In these three videos then, you've learned the basics of EIGRP, a little about EIGRP troubleshooting, and in this final video, a little bit of information about the EIGRP topology table, uh, the not a summary command, and the variance command. If you master these elements, then the EIGRP part of the CCNA exams shouldn't trouble you. Keep a lookout for other CCNA prep videos on this site, particularly uh, the new series of OSPF videos that are coming up soon, uh, followed by a series of videos on IP version 6, on um, access control lists, and on um, spanning tree. Thank you for your time.